Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this session of the State and City Council. It is Monday, the 17th of October, 2016 AD. And would those of a like mind please join me in a flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay. Let's see. We have almost everybody here. We have we have uh, Ralph Lewis is missing, and everyone else is here this evening. Hello, Priscilla. Mr. Mayor, over here. Yo. Over here. <laughs> Councilor Lewis let us know that he was going to be absent this evening. We just want to let you know that. Thank you. I mean, you know, jump in there any time on those. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Staff introductions, they're all here that need to be. And was. Um, your financial advisor, was Andy going to be here tonight? We thought so. I haven't heard from him. If, if he's not here, we can still continue with the items on the agenda. I'm fine okay. discussing right. them. Okay. Good, good. Uh, let's see. Are there any additions to the agenda? No. Declarations of ex-party contacts, conflicts of interest, bias, etc. Hearing none, we'll go on to presentations and comments from the public. Mr. Strohmeyer. Russ? Good evening, Russ Strohmeyer, 325 West Washington Street. I'm here representing the uh, State and Summerfest Car Show, and I uh, just wanted to mention that this year we had a record-breaking year with over 400 car or 300 cars in attendance, and um, it was we were spilling out of Neatling Park. It was onto the uh, the driveway through the two parks, and it was just a, just an incredible show. And I want to thank Chief Siebens for our special uh, escort out of town with all the classic cars. Everybody enjoys that. And uh, just a little uh, quick review: the the proceeds from the State and Summerfest Car Show go toward the Brent Strohmeyer Memorial Scholarship Foundation and uh, to date we've given out over thirty thousand dollars in scholarships to area graduating seniors and uh, then a portion of the funds each year because of our long-standing relationship with the city of state in allowing us to park the cars on the park uh, we always like to give a donation to the Neatling Park Improvement Fund and uh, to date uh, with what we're going to present tonight we've given the city and the park improvement fund uh, over ninety five hundred dollars to go toward improvements in the park and we really appreciate our relationship with the city and allowing us to do that um, we may have to ask you know a few more special favors if we keep growing and uh, to where we can park additional cars but we really appreciate our relationship with the city and uh, helping make our state and summer fest car show a great success and I am here tonight with uh, my wife Margie and our co-chairs Ron and Ann Sorby which we couldn't do it without them and it's basically just the four of us that uh, plan and put on the show throughout uh, the whole year and then with some friends and other car car show friends uh, gather and help us pull this thing off and again with our partnership with the city and Chief Stevens. Uh, so tonight we'd like to make a presentation to the city and the uh, Neatling Park Improvement Fund of a thousand dollars. Thank you, Russ. Uh, Kelly Schreiber. 
Good evening, Kelly Schreiber, President and CEO of the State and Sublimity Chamber of Commerce, and it appear, appears maybe that Santa Am Summerfest is the main agenda tonight. I just wanted to come and say uh, thank you to the Governing Council for approving our uh, community uh, grant application uh, that would help um, support uh, chemical toilets. Uh, <laughs> nothing glamorous about it, but certainly everybody in the room knows how much they're needed at uh, Santa Am uh, Summerfest. I was not able to attend the meeting where you uh, reviewed uh, the grant applications as I was out of town, but wanted to make sure I came and personally told you thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Oh, let's see. Any other comments from the public at this time? No? Okay. Consent agenda. I have, I have a, can, it, can I interject something real quick? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> Thanks. Russ, I just wanted to say uh, a special thank you to you and the people who uh, put on that car show. It is certainly, uh, I think, a great addition to some both Summerfest locally and to the community. And uh, the fact that you go the extra mile to actually donate money back to the park, which is not a requirement, uh, goes above and beyond. I'd just like to, to acknowledge you. And we need to thank Kelly for the pushing for the chemical toilets, too. <laughs> okay. go, go, jump? I'll, I'll leave that up to you, Hank. You go ahead. You can do that one. Jump on there. Come on. She <laughs> you will thank me the last Saturday in July 2017, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you again. And okay, let's do the consent agenda for October 3rd City Council minutes. Um, Brian, I bet it was a good meeting with all that extraneous chit chat that I interject and things, so I'm glad you were here to do that. Uh, anything on that, please? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I have a question about the um, OLCC change. Um, okay. Just out of curiosity, I don't necessarily want to debate it, but um, I'm just curious if any other restaurants um, do that in town. Um, have alcohol um, sold with takeout or delivery orders? Huh. No, they're, they're the only one that's done that or is requesting that. Okay, but any any of them could, and that'd be compliant yes. with OLCC. Yeah. Huh. Who knew? Okay. To that to that note, do they check ID when they go to the house? I, that I don't know. Probably we have the person that they're uh, actually handing it over to. Right. Interesting. Mm, that is. Yeah. Is that the only restaurant in town that does that or wants to do it? Yes. Really? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Are you, are you guys aware that when, uh, if you have a cab company in town, you can get alcohol delivered to you from the liquor store anytime really? you want it? Must, yeah. must not be tuned into some aspects of life in our fair community. I, I didn't realize that. Um, <laughs> UPS leaves it on your doorstep. Yeah. Do they bring it in a brown paper bag? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm yes. just asking. Yes, yeah. the last time okay. I did it, it did come in a brown paper right. bag. Okay, I, I would expect that, but you don't, I don't know. Okay, what, uh, any other thoughts or comments on the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I, I guess I do have a question for um, Chief on Resolution 951. Just a point of clarification real quick. Um, there was a $1,000 uh, fee for violation of procession? Correct. Can you expand? Or procession or event. Does that include funeral procession? That, that would be un underneath that if they did not, uh, if, if something happened that they were out of compliance with it. But uh, procession, uh, funeral processions are exempt from, from having to have a permit. This is, it's more, more in relation to uh, somebody that brings an event into town and either uh, doesn't comply with sure. the rules or they just do an event without a uh, permit altogether. Yeah, what, what we found is that uh, in going through it, there was an issue and when I wanted to address it and deal with it, we realized that the, the fee or the fine for violating it was lo less than the permit cost. Gotcha, okay, thanks. What? Chief, what's involved? Just out of curiosity, what's involved in getting a permit for a, 
funeral procession? Or there, for a funeral procession, there's none. There, oh. There's no requirement for it. They just call us and then they, they let us know that they're doing one. And if it's a large enough one, uh, the police department will, as a courtesy, will go out and help uh, block traffic at the major intersections as they're going through. How, how much, how much uh, lead time do you need on something like that? Usually about 10 or 15 minutes. They usually oh, call okay. us. Okay, well. They usually call us early in the morning, the, 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 the day that they're going to do it, and let us know. And, okay. and then if we're available, then we go and help them out. Okay, good. Just wanted to know. Anything else? Anything else on consent agenda? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'll offer a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Uh, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion is passed. We don't have any public hearings tonight. Unfinished business. Suggested addition to criteria for approval of application for zone map amendments. Mr. Fleischman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a discussion about possible uh, changes to the criteria for approval of zone map amendment applications, and the council directed me to develop some language to address the issue of how well the proposed zoning would fit into the character of the neighborhood. Uh, and so you've got in front of you the language that I've developed. I've, I've put in the staff report the existing six criteria for approval and a suggested number seven, which would read that the physical characteristics of the proposed property for rezoning are appropriate for the proposed zone and the potential uses allowed by the proposed zone will not have an adverse impact on surrounding land uses. And uh, we can tweak that as the council wishes. And once you come to an agreement on what you think you want, we'll send it to the planning commission for a public hearing. And then it'll be back to you for a second public hearing and consideration of the amendment. Hmm. What do you think, folks? The the adverse adverse impact that last part of that number seven there um, uh, that isn't very objective is it this is it kind is of not objective at all that's why I like it that's why I don't like it <laughs> and that's why it's applicable to the last situation we have in both directions Okay. Because the physical characteristics of the property proposed for rezoning are appropriate, but the proposed zone and potential uses allowed by the proposed zone will not have an adverse impact on the surrounding land uses. So, just to give you a perspective, the adjacent property to uh, Mr. Koenig's property had two um, triplexes or two duplexes on there. So, it's encompassing both sides of the fence, in my opinion. I do agree that the adverse piece is. I mean, yeah. it gives argument for the neighborhood to come and say, here's why we believe it's adverse, and then it's up to the council to mm -hmm. say yes or no. Right. If we were in a tight uh, land situation where we were promoting infill more than some other things, uh, you could argue that that, um, that had a potential plus effect because it would more housing in a smaller space, but that isn't our situation, so we don't worry about that one. I don't know, just a thought. If, hey, Mr. Mayor. If we think it can work, go ahead. They still have to meet the other six criteria, correct, Dan? Correct. Yeah. yeah. This, this, is, this is one additional criterion just, that just would be added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, what are we supposed to do with that tonight? Uh, well, I, I did not provide any uh, suggested motions. I'm, I think if I get consensus that the council is satisfied with this language, then it'll get placed on the Planning Commission's agenda for their November meeting for a public hearing and be back to you 
in mid December probably. Okay. All right. So it'll come back to us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You folks okay with that? Yeah. I'm okay. I'd like to see another perspective on it, so sure. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we're missing something that we haven't discussed yet. Let's do that then. Put it on the Planning Commission agenda, Dan. Okay. Uh, next thing is, and I don't see Mr. Parks. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Here. Take it. Where do you go? Where's my, where's my agenda? Under here. Ah, go back to the front. Um, next item, comprehensive fiscal policies. Uh, Keith, do you yeah, want to take that? Happy. We anticipate Mr. Parks being here. I haven't heard from him, so I'm not sure um, why he's not, but I'm more than happy to, to go over this. Um, Back in the budget committee hearing, we, we provided a draft of fiscal policies. This follows a GFOA recommendation um, for cities to establish policies that for financial policies to provide guidance and, and help and decisions for, for management. And we brought this back forward um, in mid September, I think, like the September 19th meeting, I believe. Um, did a presentation and discussed it. So, uh, based off of, of those two, um, went ahead and we're bringing this forward for consideration um, and asking for the governing body to to approve the comprehensive financial policies um, or to let us know what, if any, changes you'd like to make so we can continue to move forward with this. Um, this is sort of a progressive step, but I think it's a good step for us to take in our financial policies, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have about this proposal. Okay. Questions, thoughts, Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. Keith, uh, at what point do we lose um, our comprehensive fiscal policies, or do we ever have them? Uh, we haven't had anything formal of this nature in the past, so this right. would be the first uh, adoption of these standards. Um, yeah, these standards, and this is sort of modeling it after other cities and other standards um, the GFOA recommends. So that's right. where the basis for this is. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. One more uh, question, Keith, for just, um, there's several references in here to uh, finance director. Um, I'm assuming in that person's absence or in that department absence, you would be, that, that the administrator would, would be the next person. That'd be correct. Do we need to clarify that in a couple of them? I think there's a couple paragraphs that specifically st stated uh, finance director. Just a question. I, I don't know. We have to. I'm just throwing it out there. No, I think it's an interesting. I mean, I see your point. Um, maybe what the language probably should say is is finance director, um, you know, city administrator or designee. You know, something that just it's gives a little more right. clarity, just for situations like this. Um, and I think that's you know, as we've gone, as we started to go through personnel manuals and, and other things for recommendation recommendations for for changes, that's one of the things we've noticed is maybe trying to be. Um, a little more broad or, or encompassing of, of more situations um, for some of that. So I think, you know, it, naturally it would seem that in that absence it would it would divert up to the city administrator, but I think if we wanted to make sure the language was clear on those to make that change as part of the adoption, that would be completely uh, acceptable. That was my only suggestion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any other discussion or questions on this? Yes. I do. Go ahead. On on that, I I um, want to make sure that that any of that language that's put in there about the finance director doesn't say something like the finance director, comma city administrator, comma designee will structure a debt insurances and oversee the ongoing, because then it doesn't show that that actual task belongs to the finance director. And so if we get a finance director and there's any kind of problems with the delineation of duties, we need to know that this is the finance director's, mm -hmm. this is their purview. Sure. You, you, in other words, can't come in and do something that, that they can do. So just as long as we, we give them the, um, that it's only in the absence of the finance director does other parties in the city get involved in that. Mm -hmm. 
I, I mean, I feel like comfortable in saying we could definitely make sure uh, legally <laughs> craft language that that makes it, you know, that, that doesn't leave it as ambiguous or that multiple people could could interfere. Um, and so I'm, I'm without, you know, right off the top of my head, I don't know what that language would look like, but I'm, I'm confident we could we could find that and, and come to a, a reasonable uh, language that, that meets that that goal and objective. Historically, the, the person that controls the money has a lot of a lot of power. They can tell and have told in the past departments that that uh, I don't think we should do that project right now or this year or ever. Maybe in three or four lifetimes we might consider doing that. Doesn't matter that it's in the budget. Somebody that's got control of the money, that it's just a lot of a lot of power there. And I'm I'm uh, I guess a little nervous about that. As long as we you know, it, it needs to be tempered and it needs to be uh, managed. I don't know if that's the right word I want. Um, but it's I, I've seen lots of finance directors and 40 some years and they were all people that you you had to go ask for things that's just an observation mr. mayor yes I, I believe the administrator recognizes that and I believe that's the reason for these policies yeah, to be I adopted hope, uh -huh. I hope so yeah yep yep Allay those fears. It's also a way you have more than one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That just hasn't been the, the case in the past. And not even the recent past, along over a lot of years. So hey. what would you folks like to do with those? We can approve them as presented, we can amend them, we can defer action on them, we can do whatever pleases. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how the verbiage is going to change the content of the policy itself. No. So I don't know that there's, I mean, Keith, should, should we make the corrections and then bring it back or? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand doing that I mean I, th I do think it's it's just you know almost like making sure you know kind of the how that operates and, and I understand the concern that's sort of being placed on that but I don't know if we can we can definitely bring him back to the next meeting with with that proposed change um, but if, if you're fine with just you know us doing it, I think that's a minor thing that says you know with clarifying on on structure uh, you know to prove um, with that change, but I'll leave that up to you and, 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 and the, the council and what you think is the best uh, way to go. I think either way could work. Mr. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> this isn't something that has to be adopted by resolution or by ordinance, so I would be okay going ahead and approving it with the changes that we've discussed. Yeah. And if we need to make further changes, you know, next month or a um, few months from now, we can. I, th I think what I can do as well is once we've come up with that language to make sure and send it off to all of you and, and see if that meets the need and you're comfortable with it and, and go from there. Was that a motion? Yes, okay. that was a motion. I'll second it. Uh, Keith, just another thought. Um, this, as I read it, uh, this policy, um, or one of them anyway, says that whoever's the city manager ensures compliance. Uh, anyone take into account the amount of time it would take to make sure that we've got 60 days of a budget left for this and 30 days for that and I, I, I guess that, is that you even know, a concern or? well I, I guess it and you know I, 
you're a history person. I come from the Midwest. You know, there's the old saying with Harry Truman, the buck stops here. And I think what this is sort of acknowledging is that okay. it is the responsibility and duty of the city administrator to make sure that this is is compliant. And um, yeah, these are things that you know cause you to um, lose a little bit of hair. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, the reality is that's what the job is and that's what entails and understanding this is what we're responsible for as a city administrator um, okay. so i think that's what it is of saying you know we, t we take the responsibility and obligation to make sure that that we are compliant and if we're not to address it and to, and to handle it and ultimately if we are in failure of that that's that's a failure to do our duties uh, i hate okay. to put it in such terms but that's really the reality okay all right thank you Folks, what would you like to do with this? We Mr. have a motion and a second. Yeah, fine. Go ahead. We do. We, we already Mayor. have one. We have one. We a do. motion and a second. Well, whoopie do. We have a motion and a second to approve the comprehensive physical policies as presented. With, uh, with, the, with the changes that we discussed. With, the, with changes. Okay, so uh, as what? As amended. To be amended. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other discussion, please? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, we'll declare the motion passed four to zero. And moving right along. Let's see. Finance department report Cindy and Elizabeth. Nope. Nope. Anything there? Punch in, the pension funding policies. Yeah. Under new business, Mr. Mayor. What did I miss? Pension funding policies. Thank you. Let's do that one. Keith, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, before you is a pension funding policy. Um, as I reread our staff memo, I, I do wish I had made, um, and I know we talked about it, I do wish I'd put in there, our funding uh, policy we currently have, we have a defined benefit plan for employees who are not part of the police department. The police department are, are part of PERS, but for all the other city employees, they're part of our defined benefit program. And our program is in good shape. Uh, Milliman is the actuarian who oversees um, our program and performs analysis. And, and really what we're dealing with today is several key issues. One, uh, rates of return on our, our investments, which um, anyone who's following the market knows has been down and suppressed over the last few years. And uh, changes in mortality rates. Um, people are are living longer, and so when you're looking out long term to what your obligation is for these defined benefits, it's important to understand um, and look at what your rate of returns are, because that makes a, a difference in what your funding levels are. Then also how long your employees are going to live, um, and that tells you how long you're going to have to pay out. What's interesting about the mortality tables, um, what we're seeing is still a linear progression and there's really no signs at this point of, of where um, people are leveling off in terms of life expectancy. So um, what we're proposing tonight is, is a couple of adjustments, um, looking at making some change to kind of make up for some of the <coughs> assumptions that we made about our return on investment, which we haven't received changing the mortality and, uh, tables assumptions, changing future mortality table assumptions, uh, scaling down a little bit on salary assumptions, and then continue to monitor and to review um, our projected return on investment, which is currently about six and a half, it's at six and a half percent. Um, again, this is better than PERS, and it's still in what's considered an acceptable level. Um, but it's, it's something with the market over the next few years we may need to monitor and, and change which could do that. The changes we're proposing is going to make a difference of about a $650,000 unfunded liability that we have. So we have a program in place over the next few years to, to um, make up for that difference. What you have also is a pension funding policy that talks about how we will operate and how we will manage and take care of our retirement plan. Um, the other thing I want to mention is we're asking for a little more time on that six and a half percent return on investment that we're anticipating as we look at fees that we're currently paying um, and yearly services that are being done. There are requirements based off of um, federal laws and state laws and GASB requirements um, for what work needs to be done on the actuarian, but we may be overdoing the amount of, of work that's being done on there and so maybe 
a simple adjustment in fees, and anybody who's ever looked at their retirement or 401k can understand fees make a big difference. Uh, maybe a change in fees could, could make up some of that difference that we would need to make up potentially in our return on investment. So I know I've talked a lot, um, but I'd be happy to answer questions on this um, kind of complicated issue and to um, go over what, what we're trying to do and, and what our proposal is. Okay. Questions or thoughts? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Brian. Keith, how does the fleet replacement fund have any influence on that? Well, one of the things we have is what to do with that fleet replacement fund, and one of the things we're considering and, and we'd like to look at for that 6.5% or even for making up some of that unfunded liabilities to take some of that money and infuse it in immediately or in the near future, which would um, basically lower our future payments. But we'd like to look at that to see if that's really a wise um, way to, to spend that money or to utilize that money. That fund has a little over a million dollars, just under $1.1 in it. So an infusion of even $100,000 could make a, a pretty interesting difference in what our overall requirement and payments going forward to try to make up for this, these changes in the mortality table. Um, but it's not something we wanted to necessarily recommend at this time. It's just right. something we wanted to mention to consider. Can I ask a question? Yes. I have a ahead, question please. that's actually off subject, but since you brought up the, the that fund, do you know what the average fund for uh, that people have is? Is there an average, the one that we have a million one in? Uh, I mean, that basically what I would I would say is. I mean, no, not for a vehicle replacement fund, but you know, as of what we have in reserves, um, there's different methodologies, and that's one of the discussions we need to have of, of what that should be. Um, I just read a uh, you know, theory about a, a liability um, matrix uh, for determining what you think your, your, your level should be at, and, and it's one of those numbers that sort of varies from place to place on, on what it is. So. I think that's one of the questions we're sort of looking at in terms of what we should have in reserves. And really, that really is a reserve fund. Um, but to answer your question, I think it's a little more complicated. But right now, we do have what would I would call for a city our size a pretty healthy level of reserves. Yeah. So, I mean, we couldn't take, you know, 500000 out and do some work on a road somewhere, huh? Well, the, the, the question becomes, and we're going to get into the weeds a little bit here, um, th how the money was distributed and, and then it has to be used for those purposes. So the question with $100,000, if it was, it, was, it was came from funds that were um, public works, uh, planning, administration, uh, things of that nature, the argument can be made that money can then be put in the, into, um, into the pension fund in essence because it's meeting what those obligations are. But the concern is if you start to spend that money that would be outside of the purview of what it was put in to utilize, then you could get into some legal issues. Okay. And that's getting well beyond my pay grade on legal issues, okay. but I know it's an issue and that's what we need to look at. Is it currently, is that money somewhere that is, that's generating some kind of return? Yeah, it's currently being invested in, and is in sweep accounts as well. Um, so we do receive a small amount of interest on that. But one of the ideas with investing is, you know, the return on investment may be higher if we invest it now into the pension um, and catch that up as opposed to what we're returning on interest. And that's just sort of analysis of what we pay people like Andy to look at. Keith, the real, the real boogeyman that, that um, almost every, everyone hears about this, and uh, I don't know if anyone knows what to do about it, but this thing called an unfunded liability. We're not stuck with very much of that, are we? No, I mean, I need our the reassurance on that. Well, our, our fund is currently, I mean, as it stands fully funded, the recommendations we're making are going to take our our funding balance to basically 88 um, percent. Our okay. our proposed uh, retirement plan benefit says that we'll keep the pension fund in the 90 percent to 110 percent. So basically, if we could become it becomes kind of uh, a <coughs> too successful, if you will, that, that we'll scale down what our, our, um, we're putting into that pension fund. Um, but the idea is to keep that above that 90% and then to continue to work towards maintaining a 100% balance. So if you look in our proposed pension plan, that's kind of what we talk about that's in there. So 
I mean, to answer your question, yes, this is the change that we're proposing will create an unfunded liability currently at six hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. But with the plan of, of over the next few years working to that to uh, get that fund back up and immediately getting it above what our proposed policy would be, which is above that ninety percent threshold. Okay. And. You know, I, I know I'm. This, pardon my, my my staff here's all the time. It's the toughest toughest Muppet sort of argument, but we are much better than PERS. <laughs> um, so I mean, that's that's, good, that's, that's good yeah. But again, that's not much of a compliment. Well, that's the that's the one that's always talked about. And uh, yeah, okay. But Mr. Mayor. Yes. But Keith, we're still going to speaking of unfunded liability. We still don't know what our obligation is to PERS from that standpoint, correct? Yeah, this would be a police department issue, and the number that I heard recently was potentially a 20% increase, which it, would it impact the police department only. Um, we're yeah. still waiting to hear our exact number, but but it's still affecting the city as a whole. That's correct. That that will. So you're going to combine that with this. Correct. <laughs> this is going to have a pretty significant. Um, uh, this alone, about a hundred thousand dollars per year, an increased mm -hmm. cost for retirement for just the non-police portion of, of right. the city. Right. And then we'll look to see what the PERS portion equates to. There is some indication we might not be as bad as 20%, but I think for right now, 20% is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Less than that, we'll take it. But What do you folks want to do with this? Council may amend, defer, or take no official action on the policy if desired. We can have a motion to adopt the pension funding policy or adopt it as amended, however you folks want to, want to move. Mr. Mayor, yes, I have full confidence in Keith to uh, explain this to us, but I sure would like to have Andy here to maybe put that perspective on it, just because of his depth of knowledge. I don't know that's going to give us a different outcome, but and we can definitely. I'm, I understand that, and we can definitely um, defer this until when he can be here. Personally, I don't know if that <coughs> would help me understand or feel more confident in this. Um, I'm not an actuary, and I have to feel confident that the real actuaries know what they're doing. So um, I would take their recommendation and adopt it as presented. Okay. So a motion to adopt? Sure. Okay. I'll second, second that. A motion and a second to adopt the policy, yep. pension funding policy. Um, <coughs> is there any other discussion, please? No? Um, would you would you poll the council, please, on this one? Sure. Councillor Neagle? Yes. Councillor Usselman? Yes. Councillor Glidewell? Yes. Councillor Quigley? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Yes. I, I think to the point, just to make sure council members are, are comfortable, I'd be happy to try to schedule times um, as well with, with Andy or even with Milliman um, to, to answer questions or to, or to go over it. Um, so just just want to put that out there. You know, the, Keith, the tough part of any of this, I mean, some of these folks may be trained in accounting and money matters, but just knowing the questions to ask is the really tough part, for me at least. Uh, how do you ask a, a sharp, incisive question that cuts right to the heart of, of uh, some funding imbalance or whatever. It's uh, it's difficult. Well, I think so we have to exhibit faith in those that do understand these things, like yourself. Yes. Anyone else? Okay, let's go on then. Uh, finance department report. <coughs> Is anyone else in here frustrated <laughs> continuously by the number of delinquent 
notices we have to send out every month? Yes, I mean, to answer your question, I, I it just so happened to run the numbers myself. We're at 21% delinquent notices for September and 18% for August. I rounded up a little bit on that, that September number. Um, we start. We have had conversations to try to figure out what to do about this, and, and one of the proposals I think we are going to move forward is to continue to try to another push to get people to sign up for automatic payment to see if that will help um, with some of this. People do enjoy coming into the office. We had some conversations and, and seeing um, Randy and, and Elizabeth, um, which is nice, um, but you know, at the same time, maybe to help with some of that. So, uh, other cities are, are facing some of the, the same challenges and are, are taking some in interesting approaches. And I think at this point, um, I think we're willing to try just because you said the same thing that I did. It's why I ran the numbers. I mean, that just one in five for delinquent notices is seems a little extreme yeah but but Keith is it uh, 130 124 notified of impending shutoff and penalty is, is it that that that's almost the same number every month isn't it it's it is pretty consistent and the number of, of, of services and on shutoff day it, it is um, I would really like to utilize the resources better than what they're being utilized on shutoff day um, and and so uh, you know, there's some folks that may not ever, you know, that's the final kick, you will, incentive, but I, I, I'd sure like to see it um, utilized better. I'm not even going to say in proposing we have people pay a year in advance. I don't think that would fly. No. <laughs> it wouldn't in my house. Nobody else is either. It just seems, it seems like we waste a lot of or utilize a lot of human resources in, in dealing with with uh, getting these utility bills paid. Moving right along, unless there are other questions or thoughts. Chief, what have we got in the police report? Okay. Mayor and Council, you have before you the monthly statistical report, which are in line with previous months. But uh, I would like to share with you something that the police department is uh, just uh, put into place. Uh, we have partnered with the fire department. The fire department was um, upgrading their um, a AED machines, the automatic external defibrillators uh, for people that are in cardiac arrest. Uh, and uh, they donated four of them to the police department to put in the patrol cars. Uh, we already had one uh, that floated between the cars, but this will help us out to have five in the cars now. Uh, we also put stickers on the sides of the cars showing that they were, they were inside the vehicle. Um, emergency uh, services has, has found that uh, having an external defibrillator has greatly increased the chances of survival for somebody with uh, cardiac arrest and uh, the officers are able to, uh, to respond uh, to those situations and get there very quickly. Uh, we've put them into place or we've used them a couple times since we've had at least the one so it would be nice to have uh, more in the cars. Thank you, Chief. Questions or thoughts Mr. on, on Mr. Mayor, the exhaustive I report? I have a question for Chief. Go ahead. Rich, did the marijuana uh, passage have anything to do with, are we not enforcing drugs anymore? I see you have one report for the whole month. Am I not reading this right or under narcotics? Under society, it says one for the whole month. Maybe there's reporting differently, or I mean, that, that includes math that and everything else, right? Or let's say that is fairly that is fairly low. I don't know why that's so low. I'll have to look into that and find out. Okay. And the second question I had: What happened? Can you elaborate for us the baca spray paint all over town on the street? Yes. That comes from a, uh, there's a motorcycle club uh, that uh, used that. It was, it's stands for Bikers Against uh, Child Abuse. And they did a, uh, a, a ride through town and they, uh, it was uh, one of those events that was not uh, permitted and they had <coughs> not gained a permit. And so they, they painted that on the street to show their riders where, where to go. Right, so did we ever hear back from them? Uh, or? We tried to address the issue and we uh, asked them to come back and, and clean it off. They attempted on one of them and then they uh, stopped. We attempt, we called it back again uh, and they still had not. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pervasive anything. all over town. It's even in the yes. turn lane. 
on first in Washington. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Chief, what what other agency do we commonly assist? I mean, we've got 30, 30 instances of assisting other agencies. Which is there one that is on the, the on on the list mostly? The mo majority of those are Department of Human Services, uh, which is uh, uh, where the child um, child abuse um, investigations come through. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. The DHS is required by law to any time that there's a report to them by somebody in the community, they're re required to oh, report okay. that to us. And then we investigate it all uh, as well. The majority of those are, uh, are usually unfounded. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, thoughts for Chief on, on that report? Anything? Okay. Let's go on to Public Works Directors. Lance? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome back, members of the council. You have the uh, monthly operating report for September. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. <coughs> Nothing further to add other than, as you look down, the uh, total rainfall for September was 1.55 inches. Uh, just this last weekend alone, we had over two and a half inches. Just a little information for you. I was down at City Hall this afternoon and Brenda was in from the treatment plant and I, I asked if that much rain in a short period, if it overwhelmed the system, she said no, but it fills things up. And uh, I guess that's the answer we want. <laughs> I asked her about infiltration. And I, you know, this is one of those things where you kind of know the answers, but, but you want to hear what somebody else thinks of it. We are working on that all the time. Aren't we? Infiltration? Yeah. Yeah, until the groundwater comes up and it does no good. Yeah. yeah it just okay. runs off. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. So, questions, thoughts? I, Go ahead. Please. I have a question. So, are you, uh, Lance says, are you the solid waste people? I mean, the solid waste <laughs> garbage. I'll tell you what. I've been getting. I've been getting since. On how you're looking at things. <laughs> since uh, we had some people come and speak, and I don't even remember why they were here now. That was I the garbage think. folks. Garbage yes. contract. Yeah, the garbage contract. So go. I've been getting calls and emails regarding why the city hasn't done anything about that, and I have no idea. I finally said, what is the city supposed to do? And this is what I guess. I guess you need to determine who would propose an amendment to the solid waste portion of the code, then ask them what's needed to make it happen. This was regarding being able to pick up, I think, table scraps in your recycle box? The, yeah. I believe they already well, said we're actually, in place. We're actually, I can, I can actually answer that. We're, we're working okay. right now. Um, I just saw a draft last week with Republic Service. We talked during that meeting about doing an educational campaign about being able to do it. So they have these really colorful uh, postcards. postcards Yeah, that, that are going to say, here's what you can and can't. OK, so it's actually in place now. Yeah. So we don't need to amend any code or anything. No, all we're doing is we, okay. we're need, we've talked about doing a promotional campaign. So. I guess I'll okay. let Alyssa, I mean, I saw it. Do we know when it's supposed to roll out or? He didn't, he didn't give me an exact date of when it was going to roll out. Um, it's okay. Matt Kofer who was here. He emailed me, I think, late last week. And uh, yeah, they're going to roll that out. We're going to put it in our newsletter. We're going to post it on Facebook, our website, and try to get it out there. But yeah, it's already in place. They just needed to do the education aspect of it. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. I will answer accordingly. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Lance, anything else? No, sir. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. We're, we're going to the uh, Planning Commission the end of the month on a dog park. Uh, that is correct. Gus wanted to know. I sent you an email October 31st. Okay. You get dressed up and come down and uh, come to the Planning Commission. We'll talk can about I, it. Can I bring him? I don't see why not. Mr. Fleischman runs the show, so you have to talk to him. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, planning development. Mr. Fleischman. Dan? Dogs and well-behaved children are always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You've got my staff report. I don't have anything else to add to it. I'll entertain any questions you have. Okay. 
Dan, do we have an identifiable homeless population? How would we identify them? They're homeless. Uh, the no. I've not been involved in, in that effort. I know the police department is occasionally responding to reports of apparently homeless people camping out either on city property or occasionally on private property without the permission of the owner. But what we don't have a way of yeah. keeping track of who those people are, how many there are, et cetera. Well, you know where this is coming from, this daily deluge of, of news from the, the homeless population in Portland. Uh, you would think that there'd have to be some, some spillover into the smaller communities of, of that, just maybe not as identifiable, not certainly not as, as a larger problem, but a problem still. You won't find them where there's no services. Right. Okay. People that are homeless need to be near a place where they can get have access to you know, to, to daily things. Okay. Like we have most of the larger cities, like Eugene, they have what they call day shelters, places you can go and take showers and eat lunch and do your laundry for free and those kind of things. Salem so. has... I don't think Salem has yeah. a day shelter. We Eugene, yeah. I actually opened the first one in Eugene and then Central City Concern opened one in Portland. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, to my knowledge, uh, Salem does not have a day shelter. They have Union Gospel Mission. Yeah, that's a, a little different than a day shelter. Yeah. But okay, all right. Well, just something maybe to stay aware of, as uh, because we're here. Uh, Jana, uh, September the library report, please. Mr. Mayor and Council, you have my report before you. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I'd like to invite you all to the. Th this Thursday at 7 p.m. we'll have our first Oregon author visit, author Wayne, a Wayne Harrison. He's written The Spark and Drive, and he'll be here on Thursday. Okay. Can I just clarify that he's not staying at my house? Not to my knowledge, he's not staying at your house. Well, you got to know that the last time there was a visitor, I got a call the day of saying, are you ready for your guest? I think you're off the list, Priscilla, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> I didn't mind being on the list as long as it wasn't the Stay day of. Stay your house, huh? <laughs> My Airbnb. Okay, so what do, what do we have? Uh, upcoming events. Uh, Oregon author visit, Wayne Harrison on the 20th. Tea time for book lovers. That's dinner time, 5.30 p.m. Teens, human versus zombies. That's yes, interesting. Sir. Yeah. And Harry Potter party November 10th. Uh, the zombie thing is the 28th. Good. To, I think I'll be elk hunting then. <laughs> get, get out of town. Okay. Um, presentations, comments from the public. Anything else this evening? Business from the city administrator. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do want to mention uh, Alyssa has been working hard, and then all the staff has been as well as we're getting ready to roll out a new website. Um, I know we're hopeful to have that out um, first part or early part of, of November and I, I say I commend the staff because they've all been working on um, understanding how it works so they can do the updates on, on their sites and and keep information out there so I'm excited to, to roll that out and the work that's gone into it and, and we'll be having announcements and, and look for that soon that's all I have okay thank you mr. mayor yes. I have one other thing so I noticed that the uh, actual appointment of uh, someone to a board was part of the consent agenda tonight, which is kind of... No, it's, no, the, next wasn't? Item. it's the next time on the agenda. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering if, you know, we had talked at one time about inviting the people who apply um, for the board to come. Was, was done. And, uh, and it, it, that we would know who they are and acknowledge them. And so is that, is, are we doing, trying to do that now, or? Yeah, we're just about to. Oh, okay. We're just about to. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, I think it is, uh, Larry Steele, uh, who's the county treasurer. Yes. And I wondered, I thought about that most of the evening, and I know who she is. I, <laughs> yeah. Good evening, I'm Lori Steele, <coughs> Marion County Treasurer. I live at 6 Norblad Lane here yeah. in Staten. Yeah. 
and she wants to be on the, the library board, and I, I think it's a great idea. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. What um, you say, you've been participating, doing things with that library for the last 20 years. Not quite 20 years. We've okay. actually lived, we've been, been in state in about 13 years, and before that we were in sublimity for about seven years. Okay. When we moved here from Salem when my daughter was born, um, we moved to sublimity because of the good school district and low crime, and my husband was in law enforcement, so we wanted to move someplace where we weren't going to be running into the people that he was arresting all the time. <laughs> uh, and it was a wonderful move, and we're very happy to be out here. Um, and the library has always been a very big part of my daughter's life and my life and she grew up volunteering out there in various ways and um, I enjoy still going to the library and being a, a part of that and making sure it's a vibrant part of our community always. Okay, super. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just tickled that you came down tonight and uh, we appreciate you applying for this. And Thank you. I'd, um, with the council's uh, concurrence, I'd go ahead and Point Lori to the library board, and uh, Jana, you're okay with this, aren't you? I think you? it's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Are you folks all right yeah, with that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you need a motion, Melissa? Yeah. I'll make that know. motion. Do we need a motion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. A motion and a second to appoint Lori Steele to the library board. And uh, Jennifer motioned. I'll second. Yeah. Joe. Joe. Oh, Joe. Joe. Okay. Joe did. Yeah. So, uh, if there's uh, any other discussion or questions? Um, I would ask that uh, we vote in favor of Lori on the library board. All in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Hearing none, I declare the motion passed four to zero. And business from the council. Any of you have anything you want to share? And welcome and thank you again, Lori. Thank you. Nothing? Future agenda item, street overview, November 7th. Public hearing rental property, public works exemption. We're done. Thank you.